SpaceX CEO Elon Musk just officially revealed that the company could eventually develop an expendable version of its next generation Starship rocket. What exactly does this mean and how many different versions of Starship are there going to be? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is extraordinarily ambitious. Even before considering the unproven concepts of orbital propellant refilling and full rapid reusability that are central to the full system, Starship is a beast. The rocket measures 120 meters tall and is theoretically capable of producing up to 7,590 tons of thrust at sea level. It's larger, taller, heavier, and more powerful than any other launch vehicle in history. 33 Raptor 2 engines power Starship's super heavy booster which is more than any other rocket. Once it's optimized, SpaceX says that Starship can launch up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines. Has has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expending its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, impressively low but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches. And there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they're recovered. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. When asked what exactly is being expended in expendable mode, he replied in a tweet, Expendable upper stage may or may not fly, but it is an option. What he likely means is that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship with no heat shield or fins slash legs for expendable interplanetary launches. But further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and 27 feature no thermal protection, have no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. But more likelier than not, they will be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. Indeed, with its potential, SpaceX's Starship has different payload options, and it includes an option to use the stainless steel spacecraft as a reusable rocket it or have it as an expendable one for one-time uses. In early 2023, SpaceX updated the Starship section of its website, revealing that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to launch up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons to LEO and cost $1 to $2 billion per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms that the company is considering all of the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs about 420 tons. 
two expendable starships could launch more usable mass to LEO, which is truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make starship launches frequent and routine. Moreover, at least three other starship variants would make sense and are probably scheduled soon. First, we have the Starship Cargo Configuration. The cargo configuration will not feature windows, as it'll be fully enclosed, capable of deploying over 100, capable of deploying over 100 tons of cargo. The cargo configuration will not feature windows, as it'll be fully enclosed, capable of deploying over 100 tons of cargo. Its payload fairing will have a width of 8 meters and an extended volume capable of accommodating payloads as long as 22 meters. No other spacecraft currently operating is that large. This feature would enable companies to deploy entire constellations of satellites into low Earth orbit in a single launch. SpaceX's Starship User Guide states, The standard Starship payload fairing is 9 meters in outer diameter, resulting in the largest usable payload volume of any current or in-development launcher. The Starship payload fairing is a clamshell structure in which the payload is integrated. Once integrated, the clamshell fairing remains closed through launch up until the payload is ready to to deploy. Starship will be refueled in low Earth orbit with another Starship designed to simply carry propellant, enabling long-distance voyages through deep space carrying over 100 tons of cargo. The maximum mass to orbit assumes parking orbit propellant transfer, allowing for a substantial increase in payload mass. Then there is the Chomper Satellite Launch Vehicle. For satellite launch, Starship will have a large cargo door which will open to release payloads and close upon re-entry, instead of a more conventional jettisonable nose cone fairing. Instead of a clean room, payloads are integrated directly into Starship's payload bay, which necessitates purging the payload bay with temperature-controlled ISO Class 8 clean air. To deploy many Starlink satellites, the cargo door will be replaced with a slot and dispenser rack, whose mechanism has been compared to a Pez candy dispenser. And eventually, there will be a propellant depot variation. Starship's lunar lander variant, Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, is critical to the Artemis program, a current NASA human exploration program of the moon. The lander is accompanied by Starship tankers and Starship propellant depot variants. The tankers transfer propellant to a depot until until it is full, then the depot fuels Starship HLS. The lunar lander is thus endowed with enough thrust to achieve a lunar orbit. Then, the crews on board the Orion spacecraft are launched with the Space Launch System. Orion then docks with Starship HLS and the crews transfer into the lander. After landing and returning, the lunar crews transfer back to Orion and return to Earth. In short, the Starship rocket can carry a lot, but it would be up to the agreement with the agency or company that requests for its payload and the cargo it would bring once propelling itself upwards. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos and for that we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time